we want to understand the human brain. And the best way to study the human brain is a living human brain and a living human body. So there are real ethical limitations placed, ethical and practical limitations placed on what you can do in terms of research with people. So there's a new generation of tools coming online to give us something that is closer to a human. These include things like human neural organoids, human non-human brain chimeras. Brain organoids are three-dimensional brain tissues, basically small brain tissue clumps made from uh, embryonic or pluripotent stem cells. And these can be human, but really any species if we want. The moral status of organoids is unclear. Uh, we need, first of all, to determine what constitutes moral status, and there are a number of candidates. Mere consciousness or more advanced levels of consciousness, such as self-consciousness. With this symposium, we wanted to bring together scientists and ethicists and people who know about law and regulation to talk about the issues that emerging science of brain organoids is going to raise where the science is going to go in the future, the moral status of these organoids, potentially even questions around personhood and consciousness. I think they've been most successful for looking at um, defects in brain size, specifically microcephaly, where the brain is too small. Others are now using them to look at more subtle sort of defects at the neuronal level, for example, schizophrenia or autism. We're creating something and we have to first of all ask what sort of moral status does it have? And in order to answer that question, we have to identify whether that entity is conscious or not conscious and what level of consciousness it has. This symposium was intended to try to at least make a start uh, to grapple with these kinds of questions. <laughs>